Life is very loud around here, that's for sure. There's lots of laughter. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, what is it, like a controlled mess? <laughs> My name is Savannah and I'm seven. Georgia likes to play Barbies and I like to play Barbies with her. Her usually grumpy, happy, and <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> so, we uh, like to go in parks, fishing, and kissing. <laughs> no! It was a whirlwind when we first moved here to Wilmington. So we were chasing a dream. We had the goal of raising our children to love God, to love each other. Savannah and Georgia have been inseparable. You can't really remember one without the other. <laughs> They've always been each other's best friend, each other's support system. She is fiercely protective of her sisters and family. She yeah. uses her words very strongly and passionately yeah. in a good way about food and <laughs> Justice. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like God had us um, preparing for something big. We didn't expect that something big to be cancer. <laughs> so our first sign that something was unusual was that she had caught a cold and she didn't seem to be bouncing back from it. She started to lose some coloring yeah, in her face. Pale. And then one evening she told us she was dizzy and I said, okay, that's it. That's it. We're going to urgent care right now. The doctor that was on call was actually an ER doctor. I believe that his mind went there immediately, which it's not normal. Like you hear so many stories of children who aren't diagnosed and aren't diagnosed because it's not what your mind and my <laughs> immediately goes to. He knew right away what he was looking at, I think. Like all of the things that I know now to check for, he was he was cued into that right away. He told us we needed to immediately get to a children's hospital and that she needed to have a blood transfusion. We were totally not knowing what, what to think. Blood and transfusions sounded pretty scary, scary to us. Little did we know that we were up against cancer, but I, I think you knew something more serious than anemia was in play. I did. And I had been talking to some friends who were nurses and I was shooting them her labs and they're like, they're probably going to say the C word to you. Don't get scared. That just has to be something they have to check for. And I had this like impending doom of like, are you serious? <laughs> like, I live in oblivion most of my <laughs> life. It's a happy place to be. <laughs> Surely labs we're wrong, that was what I was thinking. It couldn't be right. She's fine. <laughs> you know, she's acting so normal. And the doctor walks in and um, she sat down and she said, I'm very sorry, but I have to tell you that the cells that we've seen in her blood work are definitely um, cancer cells. She had um, B cell ALL, and if you were gonna pick one, that was the one to get. And we were like, Answer. Wait, what? Are we supposed to be happy? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, yes, now we understand on the other side. It was denial for me at first. I didn't want to accept it. It was so shocking that it took a couple minutes to really settle in. Dr. Finch left the room. I just lost it, screaming. <laughs> and my first thought was, I can't live without my baby. I also had moments of anger and screaming. I think everybody screams at God at some point in their life, no matter how much faith you have in questioning why and what did I do to deserve this? Or what did we do to cause this for her? You blame yourself. You try to figure out what you did wrong. One out of every 285 kids is much more common than you think, but you never think it'll happen to your own child. And it did. Our children, praise God, inherited the oblivion. <laughs> Playing together And on they kept hospital giving bed. them popsicles. Yes. Wait, we have nurses that give us anything we want. This is fantastic. And I pushed a button going up and down, up and down, her laughing.
I send her some animals, like mail her some pictures of us like playing Barbies and stuff, so mind her. And when her come back home, her was so happy and her loved it. The most difficult thing about having a child with cancer was having to be apart from each other. We spent a lot of time in the hospital and there was a lot of times that Savannah and Georgia had to be split up. There were many tears and it was very difficult for them to have to be separated. I can't play by myself so it was very hard. I had to like give her presents and I was very worried for her because I had cancer. More than ever before, we were able to see the bond that Savannah and Georgia have. You know, they fought it together. I especially appreciate how much they are compassionate towards other people suffering. Mm -hmm. We went from a normal kid to our lives have changed for two and a half years, years in an instant. And that was, it was overwhelming. And oh, by the way, child might not be there like there's no guarantees in the cancer world you become a nurse um, by experience not by education no. but at one point in childhood cancer treatment that you actually have to administer the chemotherapy at home I mean, they say many times this is a family like your family is fighting the cancer so it was huge that he be with us so we could be together especially because she spent so much time so many months impatient your child is you know a six hour round trip away from your home and work that really puts a strain on families financially he ended up actually losing his job and that was just another blow to <laughs> when you have so much going on we were very blessed by so many organizations that stepped up so that it would take a little bit of that stress off of Ben. Strut for Kids was the first organization that we came in contact with. They help everybody in the Wilmington area. They supplied us with some gas cards. Bigger than gift cards was the fact that there was these strangers from where you lived opening up their wallets generously to help you get through this. Strut for Kids stood out to me personally because of Amy. She genuinely loves, genuinely loves, and you can tell it's so different. And it just, it, it means so much to you <laughs> to know that you're not a charity case, that you're genuinely loved and they genuinely want to do this for you because they understand the struggle and they just want to do anything. It makes such a difference. I mean, there was so much overwhelming in, in the bad way and to just have a little something of a glimmer of you're going to be able to get through this. <laughs> it's not but something there's... you could ever get through alone. Yeah. So yeah. knowing that there was a support team yeah. like that was a glimpse of hope mm -hmm. on a very dark night. They're really good at bringing mm -hmm. the childhood cancer community together around Wilmington. You could tell by the events that Strut for Kids has that they really care and they really stress the details. It's good to have that community to meet other people who are fighting that same fight with you and you can understand each other a little bit better than maybe other people. I was diagnosed when I was three with cancer. A long time ago when I was at the hospital they had to give me red medicine. Did it you? was gross. <laughs> it was one time they had to give me pink medicine. Cancer is a little bad germ. Makes you go in the hospital and makes you sad. And I hate it. <laughs> Both of them called it that, you know, that Georgia is fighting a bad germ. And we just went, we rolled with it. When we finally reached the end of two and a half years of treatment, we, uh, we, were, we were ready to be done. <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely shocking to me to think that she had just been through all of this for two and a half years and that now her one in 285 chance of getting cancer is down to one in four, and I'm supposed to be okay with that. <laughs> Many parents struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's very common in cancer childhood families, and we, we see it with our oldest daughter who, who didn't fight cancer, but she yes. has a lot of, a lot of struggles. Yeah, and yet we're a lucky one. Yeah. 
We're very thankful <laughs> that we are sitting here with all of our kids still. Yeah. One of Georgia's hardest points of treatment was losing a friend. When her got home, her had this short hair and her was really healthy. I was so excited. So I feel so much better. Oh, the white ones are for my to have chemo. Bell marrow one. Mm -hmm. This is for every day you have to be on steroids, your grumpy medicine. The stars are for when you had to have surgery. Surgery. They have the bumpy ones they gave you when you have a bump in the road. There's a lot of them. I think the green ones are for all the times that you were in seclusion at the hospital. Do you remember how you forgot how to walk? Mm -mm. If I was sick and go to there, I would be like screaming, like running all like up and down. I heard like a warrior. Her brave. Brave? Stop! Ring this bell three times well, it's told to clearly say, my treatment's done, this course is run, and I am on my way. George asked Savannah if she would ring the bell with her because Savannah helped make her brave. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was such an emotional yeah. moment. What do you think? Would you like to? Yeah. All right. actually rang that bell until they broke it. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was a very happy, victorious moment for her. <laughs> she drew the cutest picture for her oncologist and they both had superhero capes on because they were both superhero germ fighters. One of the highlights of treatment was the realization for Georgia that she wanted to be a doctor yep. when she grows up to help kids fight cancer. Strut was there consistently for us. Strut asked if they could throw her a no chemo party. She wanted a pinata. And so we had the idea of having her draw a picture of what she thought her cancer germ looked like. And then we would just build it for her. Her and her cousins, they blast with that thing. <laughs> oh, yeah! We never expect the worst, but um, it was something that is going to turn into a lot of good. Hopefully it's, we wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for that big U-turn, but uh, I, I, I feel like you know our, our family has changed in a, in a good way. Um, my job has changed in a good way. There's a lot of good that comes out of suffering, um, even though you can't really see it at the time. <laughs>